All right, folks, Mark here, cooking books. Y'all know how to bring the info. So I I was I was studying the periodic table because I was looking into the uh the the the, the component com, the constituent and component parts of salt. Right? Uh it, it's a compound element. And the reason why I was studying salt, because you know, in my research I find that salt is a good deterrent of uh, negative energy, dark energy, dark matter, evil spirits, whatever you want to call it. That salt is a deterrent, right? So me with my heuristic mind, meaning curious mind, I, I wanted to find out why. So I started to study salt. What is salt? And I've been doing it for about a couple of weeks now. And uh, like I said, when I study, I like to go deep sea diving, like really go hard with it. And I like, you know, very meticulous and uh, fast daily, it's like a very particular detail. So I found out some interesting things. So let's 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 dive in. So with salt, first of all, it's a compound, uh, ionic compound. By ionic, it, uh, what I mean by that is, it forms a bond, right? It bonds with uh, chlorine. It bonds with chlorine, and in in the bonding, it's it's what's called an ionic bonding. There's several kind of bonding in terms of the elements you have covalent bonding, you have hydrogen bonding, uh, and you have ionic bonding. Ionic bonding simply means that uh, you have two atoms. One atom has more electrons than the other. The atom with the less less electrons gives up its electron to the atom with more electrons and bond that way. There's a bonding that is formulated by the exchange, not really an exchange, but by one atom giving up its electron to the bigger atom. So in this case, uh, chlorine is a bigger atom. When I say bigger, I don't mean in terms of necessarily size. I'm talking, I'm talking about in terms of uh, the electrons. Chlorine has more electrons in this balanced shell, and sodium has less electrons. So sodium is what's considered electropositive, because when sodium gives up its electron, it now has more protons and becomes what's called positive. So it has a net net positive charge. Whereas chlorine takes on the electron from sodium and it is now called chloride. It's no longer chlorine. Once it takes on the electron from sodium, it's now considered chloride. And chloride, having that final electron that it just took from sodium, now has what's called a complete and balanced valence electron. Balanced electron is the outer shell of the atom. Now it has a complete uh, set of electrons. And in so doing, it now changed from chlorine to chloride. And it is now existing in a state of what's called electropositive, electronegativity. So electronegativity, chloride, electropositivity, sodium. All these things are so, so important. So stay with me. This is going to be dense. I'll try to simplify it as much as possible. It's very dense, very compact, very, you know, uh, it's complex. But I'll try to simplify it, but I'm still going to keep it complex because, you know, it's what I do. And so, so we have, we have two elements. We have, we have, uh, sodium, chlorine. When they combine, it's called ionic bonding, uh, Sodium gives up its electron. It's now electropositive. Uh, chl chlorine likes, needs an electron. It now becomes electronegative, and it changes its name from chlorine to chloride as a result of the completion of its valence electron shell. All right, so we're getting somewhere. So, okay. Now, with this union, we now have what's called salt. This is salt. This is how salt is, you know, this is salt. Right? Sodium, chlorine, chloride comes together, bond, exchange, giving up of, of electron, one becomes electronegative, the other is electropositive, we bond, boom. The reason why this is a strong attraction as well is because, remember, sodium is highly charged positively as a result of giving up a select, negative electron. Whereas chloride, chlorine, which takes the electron, is now chloride, embraces the electron, wants the electron, loves the electrons, it becomes electronegative. And as we know, a very basic thing we learned in probably elementary school, opposite magnetic forces attract. So this is why there's a strong ionic bonding between sodium and chloride because of the opposite charges. One is electropositive, the other is electronegative, hence we bond. 
Now, what does this what does this mean in terms of electropositivity and electronegativity? Well, now let's let's break things down. Sodium belongs to the alkyl metals, right? I found this out. Sodium belongs to what's called the alkyl metals on the periodic table. The, uh, the alkyl metals are, are, are soft metals. All metal is soft, right? Uh, in terms of the periodic table, metals are soft. You can slice them with a knife, right? Uh, and this is metal in its purest form. So sodium belongs to the alkyl metals. Alkyl or alkali uh, is alkaline is a substance that it neutralizes acids. I'll say it again. Alkaline neutralizes acids. It neutralizes acids. So when you hear like a uh, perfect pH, like a pH balance, right? You hear women talk about, you'll hear about pH balance. The perfect pH is uh, at seven. It's between zero and 14. Seven would be the perfect pH. Uh, why? Anything below seven is considered acidic. Let me make sure I'm saying that correct. Below seven is acidic. Above seven is alkaline. Right. So if it's above, if the number is above seven, if it's seven and a half, if it's eight, that means there's more alkaline in that substance than there is acid. That's healthy. You want to have between uh, seven and a half, eight. You don't want to go too high because then it's too much alkaline. It's no good. Just the same thing. You don't want to go too low because then it's too much acid. It's no good. So the perfect pH is seven. Suffice it to, to just understand that. We don't need to go too, too deep. So, uh, so we know that sodium Alkaline is belongs to the alky metals, and because it belongs to the alky metals, it is by nature a neutralizer. It neutralizes. Sodium is an excellent neutralizer. That's why salt is a preservative. It preserves things because it neutralizes, right? But this is what's important. So sodium is a neutralizer. We could, we we find it out because if you go to the periodic table, you look at where sodium falls in the group in terms of the column. Uh, or the group in the family of, of, of it's called families, right? Families of elements, you would see that it falls in the alkyl family, right? So we, we're finding some, okay, so that's interesting, all right. So sodium uh, inherently is a, a neutralizer, it neutralizes uh, acids, okay, interesting, okay, we're getting somewhere, all right? So now we go over to chlorine, we look at chlorine, okay, so chlorine. Uh, we're going to get back to sodium because I'm sure there's something I forgot. But we'll, we'll keep going. So, but so chlorine now is the. Let me see if I remember this correct. Chlorine is the first highest electron affinity. Yes, it is the first. It is ranked number one in terms of electron affinity. Now I know what affinity means. Affinity is just a likeness for something or someone. Right, ethnic affinity. I like a certain group more than I like others. That's ethnic affinity. You know, uh, vanilla ice cream affinity. I like vanilla ice cream over chocolate ice cream. So affinity just is a liking of anything, something, or someone. Right. So electron affinity in this chemistry. You know, we're talking chemistry here. We're talking periodic table. So the context. So context defines. Sometimes context can change meanings. Although I know what affinity means, electron affinity. Okay, so I, naturally I'm going to think, okay, it likes electrons. Well, that's exactly what it means, but it's a little bit more than that because, again, context sometimes changes definitions. What electron affinity means is that the amount of energy an element has to withdraw an electron. I'll say that one more time. It's the amount of energy an element has in its reserves to attract an electron. So it makes sense because we found out that chlorine uh, is number three in terms of highest electronegativity. Highest electronegativity, chlorine is number three, it's ranked number three, and it's ranked number one in terms of electron affinity. Now, electronegativity is the tendency to attract electrons to itself. I'll say that again. Electronegativity is the tendency of an object, an element, or a thing to attract electrons to itself. So chlorine is ranked number three in terms of attracting, pulling electrons to itself, right? It's electronegativity. It has a high, it has a high tendency, a capacity for that, for pulling electrons. And then it, it's ranked number one in terms of the amount of energy needed to pull an electron to itself. Excuse me, allergies. So, okay, wow. So chlorine is a, we, we, we can say chloramine is a, is a is a lover of electrons and electron electron by the way 
An electron is a subatomic particle that is negatively charged. Again, an electron is a subatomic particle that is negatively charged. They're found inside of the atom right outside of the uh, nucleus, just like the solar system. They actually orbit the nucleus like the solar system. Imagine the nucleus as the sun. The eight planets are the electrons that orbits the sun. It's exact, it's very similar structure. So the electrons are negatively charged subatomic particles that are within the atom that orbits the nucleus, like the sun, the planets orbits the sun. All right, so we're getting somewhere. So, and, and we find out that chloride, chlorine chloride, is a lover of these electrons and has a lot of power to pull the electrons. Right? And then electrons are negatively charged particles. They're negative energies. That's what electrons are. Negative energies, keep that in mind. We'll come back and see why that's so, so important. All right, so we're breaking salt down. We're getting to the, the, nut, the you know, the, the meat and potatoes of, of, of salt, right? All right, okay, so... The sodium is a neutralizer, ultimately, right? It's its inherent behavior or function uh, is a neutralizer, right? Okay. Uh, amongst other things, but we're talking about like it's its takeaway, the, the main feature, right? Okay. And we see chlorine, its main feature is it's electronegative. It is a lover of electrons. It pulls electrons to itself and it has a high uh, dosage of energy to pull the electrons. Okay. So now when chlorine, when sodium... Chlorine uh, gets together, they form what's called an ionic bond, and that ionic bond is the compound of sodium chloride, which is salt. Okay, so now we've, we've, we, we see what salt is, right? Uh, if I, I don't know if I'm forgetting something, but I think I'm covering everything. So we see what salt is, right? Salt is a, uh, 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 inorganic, yeah, it's an inorganic compound. That consists of sodium and uh, chloride, right? All right. Now, the premise of the foundation of why I did this research was, like I said before, salt in 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 various religions, traditions, cultures, historically modern. You know, you 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 can, you can we can go on forever. Salt has always been used to as a deterrent for evil energies, evil spirits, so on and so forth, to ward off evil. Okay. Now I now so now that I did this research and you know I went to the periodic table which was you know created by I think a guy named was Dmitri Medvedev in the I think it was the 19th century. Don't quote me on that. I think it was the 1850s or something like 19th century. I believe it was the end of the 19th century. And his name is Dmitri Medvedev. He's the so-called he's the father the father not so-called he is the father of the uh, periodic table which. 100, I believe 118 elements that constitute the, the cosmos and universe and everything like that. So everything that 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 the world is made of is supposedly on the uh, periodic table. I say supposedly because every now and then they discover something new and then they throw it on. Right? And not every now and then, but they have you know over the years. But anyway, so okay, so salt. Oh, okay, let's look at somewhere. So so here's the so. So they say if you put salt in the corners of your house, if you put salt in water, whatever the case may be, put it in your house, you actually you, you remove spirits, right? You remove evil energy. You take a bath, you shower in salt, right? You remove negative energy from out of your body, off of your body, and so on and so forth. You wash your clothes in certain salt. It removes negative energy. And hmm, so now I see why. I, I totally get it. I totally, 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 totally get it. Because now I understand it. Okay, so... The negative energies that evil spirits, demons, whatever you want to call them, they, they, the reason why they, if, if this is, and I believe there's some truth, no, I'm not even, I, believe, I know there's truth to this, because it's all physics, it's all physics, right? The reason why salt is a deterrent is obvious. It has the strongest electronegativity, which means it pulls negative energy to itself. So if a spirit or a negative energy is in your house, Salt is naturally going to absorb it, right? It, it has what's called absorption spectrum. So it's going to absorb whatever negative energy is around your house or around you or on you. Salt is naturally going to pull that energy in. It's going to suck it in. It's going to absorb that energy. And that absorption is called the absorption spectrum, right? A wide array of different energies or entities. That salt is going to absorb that energy. Now, here, here, here's why the, the energies would be, or the, the ghosts, the, the ghouls, goblins, monsters, creatures, whatever you want to call them, would be afraid of the salt.
the salt not only absorbs them, but remember, it has another component to it, right? The chlorine does the absorption because the chlorine is, it has the uh, electron affinity, and I told you what that means, a large reserve energy to pull negative energy to itself, or to pull electrons to itself, negative energies to itself. Electrons are negative energy. So it has electron affinity. So that means chlorine likes the ghost. A ghost, ghoul, a goblin, whatever you want to call it, an entity, uh, astral body, uh, cosmic being, whatever you want to call it, the, uh, chlorine, in terms of its chemical element, as, as uh, in terms of the periodic table, uh, its definite meaning and everything like that on the periodic table, chlorine is ranked number one in terms of electron affinity, a likeness for negative energy. Chlorine likes negative energy. So chlorine has electron affinity, and that electron affinity means it has a large storage or large amounts. It has uh, quantitatively, right? It has uh, uh, quantitatively, it has a uh, certain amount of energy to pull electrons to itself. It has the, it's number one, it's ranked number one in terms of electron affinity. It has the highest amount of energy to pull electrons to itself. So if there's negative energies around you and you have chlorine, which is in salt, then that chlorine, which is a compound of salt, is going to pull that energy to itself. Then you have the sodium. And we, we just discussed what sodium does. It's an alkaline metal. And as an alkaline, alkaline is a substance or an element that neutralizes acids. So sodium is a neutralizer. So salt, the chloride, and the chlorine work together as a captive, a captor, and a neutralizer. So chlorine captures the negative energy and sodium neutralizes it. Now the word neutralized can be translated as canceled out, nullified, mitigated, right? Offset, right? Uh, brought to a complete halt, stopped, right? So we see why salt is such a powerful deterrent for negative energies, uh, entities, astral bodies, cosmic entities, uh, etheric beings, you know, demons, ghouls, goblins, whatever you want to call them. But we, we see why salt is, is, has been traditionally, historically, in various, uh, you know, cross cultures, cross religions, cross traditions. You see, various people always use salt in in their rituals to get rid of these enemies or these entities, these dark forces. And going to Dmitri Medvedev periodic table and studying the constituent components of salt and understanding the the the, the, uh, the chemical reactions, right? The chemical reactions of salt. We can see why. Oh, this is why the ghosts, the ghosts are afraid of salt. Because salt is a captor and a neutralizer of negative energies. So if negative energies comes around, salt is going to capture, the, 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 the chlorine is going to capture that negative energy and the sodium is going to neutralize it. Neutralize means to stop or to cancel out or to offset. So my research has led me to find out why salt always been uh, used in, in various religions as a deterrent of ghosts. Till next time, throw some salt in the air. Let's get them ghosts about it. Peace.